Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 30. In this Power Tip, we're going to take a look at a power system where 5 volts is generated from a 400 volt input. Uh, this 400 volt input might be rectified 230 volt AC input line and the 5 volt output might power a DSP or, or microcontroller that does things such as power metering or input power calculations. With these kind of requirements, the first topology that you would consider would be a buck regulator. In the buck regulator, the duty factor is related to the output voltage divided by the input voltage, or 5 divided by 400 volts, which is about 1%. So if you look at running a buck regulator at 1% duty factor in a 100 kilohertz operation, you'll see that you need an on time in the power switch of about 120 nanoseconds. This is probably not realistic at these high voltages due to the switching time limitations of the MOSFETs. Probably a more realistic goal for the on time is 600 nanoseconds. And so at 600 nanosecond on time, that means that you'll be operating about 20 kilohertz. Typically, these kinds of systems have relatively low output powers, and the impact on the output filter may be acceptable. And here's a proposed circuit to do the conversion from 400 volts down to 5 volts. The key to this proposal is our low voltage IC, U1. It operates from a 5 volt input and is typically used in a buck regulator that controls a P-channel switch. In this case, we've done it a little bit differently. We have introduced an emitter switch transistor, Q1, that will allow us to interface this 5 volt circuitry to a 400 volt input. One of the key features of, of this IC is that it has relatively low bias current of 35 microamps, and so that means that we can steal our control power from the input through uh, series resistors R2 and R3. Once the power supply is up and running, bias is generated on the output of the power supply and then applied to the control circuit through D4. U1 is used in an emitter switch circuit to interface the low voltage drive output to the high voltage power stage. The base of Q1 is referenced to about 5 volts and then the emitter is switched through resistor R4 to ground. So when this ground connection is made, a current is generated in, in R4 and that current flows through the collector of Q1 and flows through R5. And this voltage develops an enhancing voltage for MOSFET Q4 through the drivers Q2 and Q3. In addition to buffering the drive signal to Q4, Q1 also provides bias to the drive transistors. When Q1 is on, the current through its collector flows through R5, and then it also replenishes the voltage on Q4. And with this circuit, we take the output of the power supply and feed it to our load, and then we also feed it through D4 into Q1 for control power, improving the efficiency of it. And so there are some limitations to this circuit. Again, based on our on-time limitation, we have low frequency operation at low power outputs that may be acceptable on the impact on the filter. It has a P-channel MOSFET and P-channel MOSFETs at high voltage are going to be more expensive than an N-channel MOSFET would be. But it's a simple drive circuit. Another shortcoming to this proposed circuit is that it has no short circuit protection. If you short the output of the power supply, most likely the pass element will fail. And then when that pass element fails, it creates a potential problem in the 5 volt. Um, basically, you've connected the input voltage to the output voltage and you could potentially put 400 volts on your load. And then the final limitation is this is not particularly efficient circuit. You'll see efficiencies in the 70% range, and that's basically because of the interface of the drive circuit and the level shift from the control IC. However, this is a very low cost, effective way to generate 5 volts in low power applications.
Hopefully you have found this presentation interesting. We have a lot more power tips. You can take a look at the power management design line and search for power tips, or you can click on a link to all the articles in the description section of this video. Thank you for your attention.